welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today we're going to look at a collet. It, uh, it's an ER35 collet I believe is what it is and it's the right size to fit my Craftsman lathe. Uh, before we get to it though of course I'm going to show you a little city limits clip that I made while going over to my brother's house. There's two spots like this on the road going there about a half a mile apart <laughs> and I thought some of you might find it amusing the ones of you that are normal probably won't but uh, the ones that are like me probably think it's funny anyway we're going to look at this ER35 collet and uh, I think I've got it sitting here somewhere I got a chuck for it which fits a number three Morse taper which is what my, the head stuck on my lathe as and it's in this bag here I haven't opened it yet but we're going to open it now along with a generous quantity of grease I got this by way <coughs> excuse me of uh, Evil Bay and uh, it's uh, from CD Code Tools but they were selling it on on there and I ordered it and I got the uh, the chuck and oh I don't know where I put them and 11 collets so what we're going to do is we're going to clean out the uh, the headstock there make sure there's no chips or grime or junk in it and we're going to put this uh, collet uh, chuck in there and see what we can see all right it's threaded in the end here so that you can put a drawbar on it. And I think that may be a, a good idea. We'll find out. Experience will tell me. The first time something gets loose and wobbles around, I'll know. All right, so let me set things up and we'll turn around the lathe and get a look at this stuff. speed. Pay attention to the city limit signs on the right. And pay attention again. The chuck uh, comes with 11 collets from 3 sixteenths up to 3 quarter inch by 16 and a wrench to operate the thing. That's better than my five seed collets did. It didn't come with a wrench and I had to order one and it turned out to be a little bit big so I'll have to go back and drill the holes in those but that's neither here nor there <coughs> I've got uh, a piece of half inch drill rod here what our English speaking cousins call silver steel and we'll put this in a collet and we'll use this to check the, uh, check the thing for run out I think I started out saying ER35. They're not. They're ER32. If I was a real machinist, I wouldn't have made that stupid mistake. So I guess there's nothing left to do but go ahead and put this thing together and uh, give it a check. Plenty of threads there, I'll have to say that. Feels like it's getting really tight really quick, but I don't. All right, let me see if I can get my little rod in there. Hold it, cut, stop the video right there. Big mistake. Now, some of you guys that started with my channel are aware of the fact that uh, I said that most everything I do here is the first time I've ever done it. But this. It's the first time I've ever had hands-on collets of this design. In fact, here lately when I got the 5C collets, it's the first time I ever even touched a collet of any kind, uh, you know, for machining. 
so in this being the first time I've ever had to call it like this I didn't use it right in the video so I, a nice guy come along and pointed out to me that you're supposed to snap this thing into the into the nut before you use it I had no idea I guess I'll, if I'd have watched closer when Mr. Pete used these things I would have seen that <laughs> or maybe I'd, I should have who knows I've probably seen it done right a thousand times and not seen it, you know? So, there you go. I made a mistake there. Now we'll go on with the video without me being so stupid as to not know how to put the uh, collet in the chuck. Sorry about that, folks. Like I say, this, this whole channel is about the first time I do anything, and sometimes it doesn't turn out right. And this time, it didn't, but somebody let me know, so I, I deleted the video, and I'm going to re-edit it and show you the actual right way to do it. Makes a lot more sense now, too. Before, I couldn't screw the thing on more than a couple of threads. Once you pop this collet into the nut, you can screw it on a whole bunch of threads, and it's not too tight to stick the, uh, the metal into. So, let's take it from that point where... I've correctly assembled it. I may have a little trouble doing this to check the alignment because of the way the uh, Craftsman Atlas lathe works. Power comes directly from the motor on these two belts here, which of course drive the spindle on that end. And through these gears here, it goes down through a set of gears through the quick change gearbox down here and over to run the lead screw. So, I can disconnect the lead screw from it, but I still have to turn that motor because I would have to get, up, get down there and actually take the tension off the motor with some bolts that it's poked it down with to get the tension off of here. So, I don't know how well this is going to work out with me trying to turn it by hand because it's not easy to turn. Okay, now that I've got this thing correctly assembled, Let's take a look and see how much run out we got. Looks like two hundredths of a millimeter just exactly like the same way that the inside of the uh, of the collet chuck was doing and we already know that two uh, two one hundredths of a, of a millimeter is uh, point zero 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 such and such out there you'll see that part in a minute uh, anyway things work a whole lot better when you finally know what you're doing. I had no idea that I had assembled this collet incorrectly and now that correctly assembled I get the same amount of run out here as I did on the inside of it. Makes me feel a lot better and that's such a small amount it is completely insignificant. So from here we'll just go on with the rest of the video uh, as if I had made a stupid mistake in the in the original version. We'll measure the inside of it next and, and see what kind of run out we get inside the collet chuck. Alright, taking a measurement on the inside of the bore, let's see what we got. So it's possibly two one hundredths of a millimeter. That's that comes out to be a very small amount, so I think we can we can live with that. Now Lee Peden, he uh, he asked Siri to do his math for him the other day, and so I'm not going to be outdone. I'm going to do just like Mr. Lee Peden, and we're going to ask Siri to convert this to inches so I can wrap my head around it. All right, Siri, convert. 0 0.02 millimeters to inches. 0 0.00079 inches. 
that's a pretty small number okay so that's what we got and run out inside the uh, collet chuck Siri convert 0 0.06 millimeters to inches the answer is 0 0.0024 inches there you go and uh, that would make this about time to terminate this particular video one detail I left out was the thread in here fits a half 13 so you pull it up good and tight with a half 13 drawbar which you'll have to make yourself of course but it's not a big bad deal at all is it I can do that that seems like two rednecks to pick up truck that was rolled into the lumber yard. One of them got out of the truck and went in the office and said, I need some four by twos. Guy in the office says, Don't you mean two by fours? Redneck says, Well, wait a minute, I'll go check. He goes out of the truck and comes back and says, Yeah, yeah, I mean two by fours. So the guy behind the counter says, Well, how long do you need them? Redneck says, Wait a minute, I've got to go check. He goes back out to the truck, comes back in a minute and he says, Well, he says, For a long time. We're going to build a house. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now. Well, as you guys can see, I'm wearing a different shirt. So I actually got two pockets, but they're not, they don't have Velcro closures, so... It's one I never wear, let alone the ones that have just got one pocket. But the boss lady figures that it's one I can sacrifice to the bleach. So uh, I'm going to wear this to get up to the top of the chimney. I had the chimney company come along and they quoted me like $1,700 to go up on top of the chimney, plug the holes that are above the roof line, and if you watched my videos in a video further back, I, I patched a whole lot of really big holes that were below the roof line. And I just can't justify 1700 bucks to somebody to keep me from going up there, you know. I can do it for under $100. Now, I wasn't lazy enough. If the guy said six or 700 he'd probably got the job. But 1700 no way. So anyway... I'm, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to, since I'm going up there, and I'm going to have to bleach a little bit on the top, the back side of the uh, chimney where you can't see from the ground because I don't know how much is up there, but I'm pretty sure there's quite a bit. And uh, I, I bleached everything else from the ground with my magic wand, but I couldn't see behind the chimney and I tried spraying back there, but I don't know what I did. So I just thought, well, I'll go up there and I'll bleach the top of the thing all over again. And then I'll put the, the concrete in the mortar spots and then I'm going to spray it down with a sealer. I'm not sure if the sealer is a good, or, a good thing or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. It didn't cost much. But I'm going to show you my driveway experiment to kill the mold while we're doing this. So you all just hang on. Now this is where the boss lady bathes the dog. She bathes the dog in head and shoulders and all the suds and stuff runs downhill goes under the fence and leaves this nice clean white spot out here if you see the rest of the driveway it's uh it's pretty well black and moldy but it gets clean up here close well last year in the video i got some imitation head and shoulders and i put on that end of the driveway and i thought it didn't work but after a couple of months, well, the, uh, the mold mostly went away. There's just a, a little trace of it left there. But it's almost as clean as the spot where, uh, where the head and shoulders always runs down. That's going to get a new application today because the boss lady's going to wash Daisy. And she always bathes her in head and shoulders. So there you go. But my, my experiment, we're going to go down here and I'll turn the camera off till I get there. As you can see, the sidewalk looks pretty nasty there. On this part here with the jagged edge, I'm going to put vinegar. On that next section down there, which admittedly has less mold than this section, I'm going to put bleach. 
and uh, we'll see how it comes out. It may be several weeks down the road before the, the real difference is seen, but I'm looking for a way to get out of coming out here running that power washer all day long. Up there onto the back side of it is where the most of the holes are and probably what caused my water leak in the closet is behind the fireplace. So that's where I'm going to be working. I'm not going to do any video up there, I don't think. And for the safety Nazis, I'm going to be wearing this and this while I'm spraying uh, bleach around up there. Well, it's the next day. That's the part that I put the bleach on. It was like a uh, oh, three to one water to bleach. Here I poured straight 5% uh, vinegar. I say 5%, that's where they write it at 5% acid. You can get it 10% acid. And it doesn't seem to have really made a whole lot of difference on either one of them, although I think maybe the bleached one over here is cleaner, maybe. It was a lot lighter in the first place. And I patched and uh, put a sealer on the chimney top to bottom. So maybe that won't, uh, won't leak as soon again the next time. Maybe not.